This is part 11 of Link to SQL tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss single table inheritance in Link to SQL. Single table inheritance is also called as filtered mapping, discriminated mapping, table pair hierarchy mapping. With single table inheritance, one database table is used to store data for all of the entity types in the entire inheritance hierarchy. Let's understand this with an example. We'll be using this employees table in this demo. Here is the SQL script to create this table. I'll have the script available on my blog in case you need it. Now, this table stores the data for both the type of employees, that is, permanent employees and contract employees. Some of the columns in this table are specific to permanent employee. For example, annual salary is specific to permanent employee. This means when we insert a row for contract employee, then that column is going to be null for permanent employee. Similarly, hourly pay and hours worked are specific to contract employee, meaning when we insert a row for permanent employee, then those columns are going to be null for permanent employee. The other columns like ID, name and gender are common to both the type of employees, that is permanent employee and contract employees. And this discriminator column here is what we actually use to distinguish between permanent employee and contract employee. Now, when we use link to SQL class design and if we were to design a class based on this table, by default, Link to SQL is going to create one employee class, as you can see here. Let's actually look at that in action. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So here, I have a new empty ASP.NET Web Application project. To this project, let's add a new item. We want to add Link to SQL classes. Let's name this sample. Click on Server Explorer, drag and drop the employees table. Notice that by default we have one employee class created. Now within our organization we know that we've got two types of employees that is contract employees and permanent employees. So what we want to do is design three classes like this. So this base class right here, employee class, is going to contain the properties that are common to both of these employee types. So ID name, gender and discriminator properties are common to both of these employees. And we want this employee class to be an abstract class because within our organization, we either have got permanent employees or contract employees. We don't have an employee of type employee, which means we don't want developers to be inadvertently creating instances of this employee class. That's why we want this employee class to be an abstract class. And then contract employee is going to contain the properties specific to contract employee. And along the same lines, permanent employee will have properties specific to it. So let's see how to design these classes. So right click on the designer surface, add a class, um, change the name of the class to permanent employee. And annual salary is the property specific to permanent employee, cut it and then paste it on permanent employee. Similarly, add another class and let's change the name of this to contract employee. And hourly pay and hours worked are specific to contract employee. So let's cut those properties and paste them here. And the next thing that we need to do is establish the inheritance relationship between these three classes. So right click on the employee class, add inheritance. So the base class here is going to be employee class and the derived class is going to be permanent employee. Click OK. So there's an inheritance relationship between those two classes there. Let's do the same thing for employee and contract employee. So base class employee, derived class contract employee. All right, now how do we distinguish between permanent employee and contract employee? We use this discriminator property. So we need to set a value for this property. So right click on the inheritance relationship and select properties. And then within the properties window, so the discriminator property is discriminator. So that's the property that we're using to discriminate between permanent employee and contract employee. Now, when is an employee permanent employee? When that property has got a value of permanent employee, because that's what we are storing in the database table. So that's the value for the derived class permanent employee. Now, the default is permanent employee. All right, let's do the same thing for the inheritance relationship between employee and contract employee. So derived class discriminator value. So when is an employee going to be a contract employee? When the discriminator property value is 
contract employee. All right, now let's lay out this diagram properly. All right, so we are done designing our classes. So with whatever you know, configuration that we have done through the designer, behind the scenes, what it has done is created three classes for us, employee class, permanent employee class, and contract employee. So from employee class, permanent employee, and contract employee classes derive. So notice that um, both the classes have employee as the parent class. And then look at this, there is an inheritance mapping attribute. So, you know, there's a this permanent employee and contract employee derives from the employee class. Now, when is an employee said to be permanent employee? When the discriminator property has got this value, permanent employee. And when it's contract employee, the employee is going to be contract employee. And this table attribute tells this employee class is mapped to employees table. Now, if we quickly look at this sample.designer.cs file, we should actually see those three classes there. So notice that we have the employee class and we have permanent employee and contract employee classes deriving from employee classes. So employee class map to employees table and notice that we are using inheritance mapping attribute as well to map to permanent employee and contract employee. All right. So now what we want to do is design a web form that looks like this. <coughs> So to this project, let's add a web form. And we want to have a radio button list with these three radio buttons and a grid view control. To speed things up, I have already typed the required HTML. So let's copy this HTML and paste it on the web form. So basically, this is straightforward HTML. We are using a div tag and setting font family to Arial. And then we have got a radio button list with the three list items. And uh, you know what are the three list items? Load all employees, load permanent employees, and load contract employees. And if you look at the value, you know when we load all employees, the value is all. For per permanent employees, it's permanent. And for contract employees, it's contract. And then we have got a grid view control. All right, and notice that we also have set auto post back to true for the radio button list, meaning whenever the selection within the radio button list changes, it's going to automatically post back to the server. That's when, depending on what radio button the user has selected, we want to load those type of employees. Now let's auto format this grid view control so that it looks a little nice. And let's double click on this radio button list to generate the click event handler. So we are going to switch based on the selected value within the radio button list. All right. So when the selected value within the radio button list, when it is permanent, that's when we want to load permanent employees. So let's copy that. So when it's permanent, then what we want to do, we want to create an instance of our sample data context class. So let's create an instance of that. Let's call this DB context equals new sample data context. So DB context dot employees dot of type, we want to load only employees of type permanent employees. And we want to convert that to a list. And then we want to set this list as the data source for the grid view control. And then finally call the data bind method and break out of this case statement. All right. So on the other hand, when the user has selected load all contract employees, so in this case, you know, the value is going to be contract. So let's copy that and paste it right there. So when that radio button is selected, we only want to load contract employees. On the other hand, if the user has not selected either of these two radio buttons, then we know for sure has selected the other one, which is our default case. So in that case, we want to generate, I mean, load employees of type employee, that is the abstract type. 
all right now let's also log the generated sql queries uh, you know onto the web form and in order to do that we can make use of the log property of the data context object so let's write it to the response stream so let's run this now with all these changes So when we select load all employees, look at that, all employees are loaded. And notice uh, the properties that are displayed, ID, name, gender, and discriminator, okay? Because those are the properties that are present within employee abstract type. Now we haven't made this class abstract. So how do we make this employee class abstract? Simply right click on the employee class, go to its properties, and then there's this inheritance modifier property. So here, select abstract. Okay, so with these changes, let's rerun this one more time. So now let's select load all employees. Look at this. So we are getting only the properties that are present in the employee type because that's what we are uh, requesting the server to return. And look at the select query. The select query is actually loading all the columns from the employees table. But since the base abstract employee class has got only these properties, that's what get displayed within the grid view control. Okay, and uh, here look at that. We don't have any where clause because we are loading all employees from the employees table. When we select load contract employees, for example, look at this. Select these columns from employees table, where look at that discriminator column is used where discriminator equals at p0 so this is a parameterized query and if you look at the parameter p0 the value of that is contract employee so here we are loading only contract employees where discriminator equals contract employee and discriminator is not now similarly when we select load permanent employees only permanent employees are loaded and look at um, the query it's a little different here where discriminator not equals at p0 and again it's a parameterized query and if you look at p0 here it's contract employee but here the condition is where discriminator not equals contract employee meaning it's going to load all the permanent employees all right now when you select load all employees if you want you know all the other columns as well that is annual salary hourly pay and hours work to be displayed then you know we have to write some code in order to achieve that so to speed things up I have a private method which is capable of doing that so let me copy and paste this private method on the web form and then we'll quickly go over the code so let's go to the web form and let me paste this private method right here and if you look at this private method it's pretty straightforward so basically this is going to return a data table and this data table is present in system.data namespace so let's bring that in and what is it doing you know to this method we are going to pass a list of employee objects and what it is going to do is construct a new data table and this data table is going to contain these columns id name gender annual salary hourly pay hours worked and type okay so all these columns are going to present within the table and then what we are doing is using a for each loop loop through each employee within the list that gets passed and then you know from the employee object that's present within that list we are returning ID name and gender properties populating these columns within the row that belongs to this table and then we also need to populate the other columns that is annual salary hourly pay and hours worked and type columns and we can only populate them if we know the type of the employee object so that's why you know we are typecasting the given employee to a permanent employee if it's permanent employee we are checking that in that case typecast it to permanent employee retrieve annual salary property value and store it in this column of this data row and also set the type to permanent because we know it's a permanent employee if the employee is not permanent employee then we know for sure it's going to be a contract employee in which case retrieve the hourly pay and hours worked property values store in the respective columns and then set type to contract and then add the row to the data table finally after we are done looping with all employee objects return the data table back so pretty straightforward private method now let's actually call this method when we try to load all employees so when we select all radio button that's when we want to call this private method and then we are going to pass this list of employees to this function 
and this function is going to convert that employees for display purposes. So let's rerun this web form. So load all employees. Notice that now we have uh, got the other columns that are specific to both permanent employees and contract employees. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.